Hello, everyone. My name is Konstantin Kushnerenko, and I'm one of the recruiter managers for SDG. I'll be hosting today's webinar on product management, marketing, bridging the gap. First, let me take one minute of your time to tell you a little about SDG. Social Discovery Group is a global technology company focused on connecting people and solving the problem of loneliness and isolation with the help of digital reality. Social Discovery Group unites uh, 40 brands, an investment fund, a venture studio. Uh, we have more than 20, 250 million people using our apps across 100 different countries. Um, our international team uh, spans over 700 professionals and digital nomads, uh, which work all over the globe. Now, uh, our products uh, include dating apps and um, uh, from our subsidiary dating group and new social and entertainment apps built by SDG Lab. Now, the speakers today come from SDG Lab, where we develop services based on new principles of communication with a focus on AI technologies and game mechanics, video streaming, all the good stuff. Now, first up will be Andre. Um, he's product manager of the Virtual Gifts uh, from Social Discovery Group, and he'll talk about uh, uncovering hidden customer behaviors uh, for better website and user segmentation. Andre, take it away. Thank you, Konstantin. Uh, thank you so much. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, can you see me? Can you hear me? Uh, is everything gave the connection? Um, OK, uh, well, uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is Andre. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be here today. And uh, today I'm going to share some thoughts on audience segmentation. Uh, the name uh, of the speech is quite provocative, but I can assure you that there will be nothing offensive in the next uh, 20 minutes. Let me introduce myself in a couple of words. I work in Social Discovery Group. I've been working here for more than, more than 12 years, had several roles, uh, positions. Uh, now I'm currently working as a product manager and responsible for a couple of internal services, and one of them is virtual gifts, and I'll talk mostly about our experience in improving this service uh, today. Uh, basically, I was talking about virtual gift is just an animated picture that expressed some kind of emotion. Uh, but uh, what's the big deal here? Uh, so what's it all about? What can be so important in the simplest tool like this? Well, um, don't judge the book by its cover. Uh, right now, the service already is a must on any streaming platform, but also is used at almost all of the social networks and dating websites. Although I have to say the service is still very underrated. The average price of the virtual gift at our product is approximately $50. But um, what does that mean, uh, $50? Is that good or bad or too much? Maybe not enough. Well, the problem here that um, the problem here is that when we look at the average number, uh, like fifty dollars, we expect uh, something like this. We think that average fifty means that we have a normal distribution, and the majority of gifts are between twenty and eighty dollars, and the revenue from gifts correlates with the number of gifts that user sends, and um, uh, that we have a lot of gifts up to fifty dollars, and a little bit less gifts from forty to sixty, and even smaller amount gifts from thirty to seventy bucks, and etc. But uh, the the reality is quite different, and this is what it actually means. We have several clusters which are very different from each other. For example, we have a huge cluster of gifts for twenty twenty five dollars, and a huge cluster of very expensive gifts for more than 500 and also some other smaller clusters. Uh, and the average in this case does not show anything useful at all. Well, you can make, uh, you cannot really make a single uh, decision that is uh, useful for your product based on this uh, information. And um, to investigate some cool insights, you need to get deeper into data uh, than just calculating the average. Otherwise, your decisions will be horrible. Guys, I wanted to meet John and Jack. Well, uh, let's imagine that we have two users on a product. Let's call them John and Jack. They are not real, but their situation is quite typical. John and Jack look very similar to each other. They're both male. Uh, they're approximately the same age. They both are entrepreneurs and live in the same state. For God's sake, they're almost twins. Even both of their pictures were generated by AI tools. Uh, but do you know what's the biggest difference between them? Uh, they are their profitability. It turns out that it's more than 2,000 times different. But what the hell? The segmentation, and it has to work. They have to get the same service because they are almost the same. Well, apparently not. 
it turns out that however you slice the audience based on geography and demographics, John and Jack will always be placed into the same group, but their profitability on the, web, profitability on the website is very different. Like, and um, uh, although uh, these exact uh, users do not exist, uh, we faced situation like this before where profitability difference between two identical users was enormous. So what do we do? How do we provide different services for John and Jack? And how do we find out that Jack is willing to bring almost 2,000 times more money than John? Well, obviously, they have some hidden attributes uh, that are different, some parameters that are not visible at first sight. But what are they? Let's dig into that. First, well, it's not that hidden. Uh, what technology do they use? Uh, we had a slightly different interface, for example, on mobile website and application, and the revenue in the app was three times worse. And a lot of people thought that the app interface was uh, better or smoother despite the metrics, but the metrics told us the opposite. So we needed to copy the interface from mobile website to the application, and that increased our app revenue for several hundred percent. Uh, besides, we can get some facts about customers um, uh, from, from their technologies. For example, this is quite obvious that uh, uh, Apple users tend to spend more in general, and that can give us some extra information about the customer's ability to pay, for example. Another cool thing to analyze is psychology. Like, what patterns do they tend to show? Are they introverts, extroverts? Are they in the mood? Are they happy? Are they depressed? Are they open-minded or not? Are they ready to see some tricky gifts? Or is it better to show them something, well, let's call it less extraordinary? Uh, then there's my personal favorite, a purpose on the website. We had a huge job to be done research a couple of years ago that investigated why do people attend our websites in the first place. Besides, I've spent many hours with our customer support department researching customers' behaviors. Uh, we clustered uh, in, it into several key reasons. Well, usually uh, users want to find love, they want to have fun, or they want to exchange some very inappropriate text to each other. And well, this is the point where our products has to be divided into three absolutely different. If we speak about virtual gifts, you need a lot of different variations of hearts in the first scenario, and a lot of, for example, sex toys in the third one. Uh, another pack of hidden attributes are in how the customers use the product. Uh, there's countless number of questions, starting with what information they give us, what services do they use, how many contacts do they have, how much time do they spend on each and every single page. There are much more hidden, hidden attributes that we can uncover, uh, but uh, each of these hidden attributes eventually is crucial. So, first of all, average lies. Uh, sometimes average lies quite a lot, and you shouldn't believe average numbers because it almost always give you a damaged image of a real context. Then, simple traditional segmentations based on demographics and geography is quite outdated. It is just no longer enough in 2023. And the last one, uh, in my opinion, effective segmentation is built on behavioral and psychological attributes, uh, and that is Quite a creative work to dig this out of users, but it is achievable and that is possible with the current level of technology. Now, I think that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the last 15 minutes or so. Uh, I'll be very glad to answer some questions in case you have any. And also, I left my contact information here so uh, we can be in touch even after this uh, wonderful event. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Andre. Yeah, guys, if you have any questions, you can uh, leave them in the comments. Um, during the video, uh, during the presentation, we did receive one question. Are these gifts just images, pictures, stickers, or kind of NFT or other units? And how do people use them? Uh, okay, thank you for this question. Um, so uh, people just store them on their profile page. And as for are they just images? Uh, right now they are, but NFT stuff is kind of uh, in progress right now. We're developing it and, and I believe that in the next one to quarters we'll release it. And I hope that that will be a very wonderful release. No further questions so far. Thank you, Andre, again. Uh, brilliant presentation. Next up thank you, will be... Thanks, sorry. Next up will be Tanya Savelyeva. Uh, she's an artificial intelligence expert, CEO of Journey AI at SDG, 
and she'll be sharing with us about product manager versus product marketing. Where do you draw the line? Uh, Tanya, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Thank you so much, Constantine, for the invitation. Uh, can you hear me? Can you see me? We can hear you. See you all right. Take it oh, away. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. So yeah, today my topic will be the product based marketing. So where do you draw the line? And we will discuss five steps that uh, you should think about uh, as a product manager or marketing specialist to communicate with uh, uh, other specialists. Uh, so about me once again, my name is uh, Tatiana Savelyeva and uh, now I'm CEO of Drone AI. Uh, I'm also have uh, experience in building a B2B business. <laughs> now I'm building B2C business and I will tell the difference in uh, these two uh, segments. And uh, I love to share and you can text me. Here is my Telegram channel with context. So uh, what's the plan of our presentation? So we will, um, uh, you know, I think it's a very important topic because product manager and marketing managers usually uh, work not, uh, you know, in the same team. So uh, one uh, person has one responsibility, uh, other person has another responsibility, and sometimes it's in fact product not good. So uh, I will tell about different steps. Uh, so first step is uh, thought about who is our target audience and I will uh, show you some examples from my own experience of how you should do and how you shouldn't. Uh, the second uh, thoughts about does what we sell match what's inside. So this is a really important question and we need to think with uh, about this question together, of course. Uh, then number three, so does the, person, does the client understand uh, what to do in the product? Then we talk about network effect and, uh, you know, I'm a specialist. Uh, it means that I'm eight years in AI and I was a med engineer and of course we will talk uh, and finish like a bonus, uh, you know, how all the things changed after uh, GPT-4, uh, GPT-3, Midjourney, and Chat GPT, and how it uh, was impact of this situation. Uh, so, what's what's the goal? <laughs> My goal, and I think what's your, uh, your goal? What I want after this presentation? So, uh, I want you to come out after twenty minutes or fifteen minutes, if uh, Constantine says this, it's enough, uh, with an understanding that product and marketing are becoming increasingly inseparable and uh, we should uh, remember it in our and always think about it in our work uh, first of all about uh, product and marketing about metrics so what is uh, what is pro uh, so what's uh, about what metric product manager usually thinks it's DAU or TV yeah, marketing, CPL, CPI installs, it's uh, daily active users, lifetime value, uh, cost per lead and cost per acquisition. So, uh, you know, there is uh, different segments of products. So when we say about product or marketing manager, we should remember that there is B2B, it's business to business and business to client. And it's uh, totally sometimes different situation. Why? Because in uh, B2B, the client is rational. So all clients are more or less the same. I already told you that my previous uh, startup was uh, B2B. So we sell a uh, chatbot platform to uh, head of support services, to head of sales. And, you know, they're all pretty much the same in a way that they have some KPIs and you should just optimize these KPIs yeah, and say th them how you can uh, help them to achieve their KPIs with minimal price. And if you explain it, uh, it's it's enough. Yes, yeah, so your goal is just provide a painkiller. In B2C now, the situation is a little bit different because the client is less rational and the, all clients are different. So your goal is not just provide painkiller. Um, if you have, for example, some food delivery service, yes, the simplest, the better. Yeah, but you also have a lot of competitors, so you should somehow differentiate yourself, not only with the product, with the marketing, with the emotions. So you should evoke emotion. It's it's uh, very, very important. So, and about what is product? What is marketing? So, what questions a uh, product manager ask uh, himself or, uh, themselves? So, what value do we bring? What pain do we solve? And how can we solve this pain better? Yeah. And uh, questions about marketing. So, find the suitable people from the target audience, track them as cheaply as possible. So, it's uh, now I think it's uh, situation is a little bit different. I, I uh, here is a, uh, a sentence so sample based. Uh, yeah, so here is uh, yeah, the title sample base uh, 2010, uh, uh, yeah, and I think that's 
it's very important that's uh, nowadays uh, so the situation is a bit different but i will tell about it later so uh, but you know not uh, every time you have uh, this situation not every time market specialists think about what is target audience for example i have a real case study in my job so yeah i was uh, you know like product manager and i was talking with marketing specialists and uh, yeah for uh, uh, and marketing specialists have the kpi the goal yeah it was some um, let, let me say 50000 of installs yeah, and uh, marketing specialist has this goal, and uh, you need to achieve it with some um, budget. And goal was achieved. Yeah, so we uh, really attract uh, this uh, instance with our budget. But the LTV of clients that we attract was decreased by three times, and we have the limited capacity that we can serve this client. And it uh, will it it was like decrease our metrics uh, very badly. So uh, it, it was a real life case study. <laughs> so uh, the thought here is that uh, marketing specialists should never have the metric of number of installs for this budget. It never should be a CPA. It should be CPA at least. Yeah. So marketing specialists need to think who is target audience, what the, this uh, people will do it with product, and uh, the marketing basics is to create the portrait of this target audience. And uh, second thing that we should be honest uh, with the Client. So uh, the question here is, does what we are selling match what's inside? Because it's very common situation, and I have this situation, uh, yes, in the project too, that we, uh, you know, so we have some user acquisition uh, at Facebook, and we just made some very beautiful uh, creatives for Facebook. Uh, yeah, and they, uh, the studio that draw these creatives, it includes different features that we don't have in our product. So clients go to our product, uh, yeah, see the premium uh, subscription, uh, buy this premium subscription, and CPA is good. Yeah, CPA is good. But uh, these clients can uh, refund, uh, and sometimes clients uh, don't like this. They buy, uh, they, they see one thing, and when they buy and when they go to that, they have absolutely another thing. So, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> increase uh, percent of refunds uh, uh, a lot. Yeah, so it's uh, very important to think about this too. And uh, other thing uh, is how we told the target audience what to do in the product. And nowadays it's very important because if your product, as I say, is delivery app, uh, for, for example, yeah, you want uh, some food, you go to this app, and the faster you go and faster you get the food, the better. But sometimes product is not that simple, and you know, all these uh, big markets who have this very simple value proposition is very competitive now, yeah, because everybody has this thought. So if you do something really new, for example, we in Drone AI, we make some digital people with whom you can communicate, with whom you can uh, just speak. It's a very new product, and when a uh, person uh, saw the uh, uh, your creative for your video on Facebook and in this video there is some digital girl comes to the um, a, a guy and say hello I want to understand you and he uh, just tap down low he go to the store and what uh, he see in the store it is the same that uh, he see in the video and uh, when he download the app uh, what uh, on the uh, registration uh, screen and what uh, on onboarding is this is uh, some you know common line or is just separate. It's very important that it shouldn't be a gap here between creative advertising and installation, registration, and onboarding. And now we will show you some examples. For example, yeah, uh, we now we uh, make some refactoring of uh, first uh, step of our funeral. For example, we have this screen. So a client go through, through some creative video on Facebook and just see the eye <laughs> and see four buttons. And uh, a lot of clients just uh, they did not understand what what, the, what what is this app. And it is rather scary to download something and not understand what 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 the value proposition. So we make very simple thing. We just uh, write this uh, here the journey, the best partner you will ever have, and one button. Yeah, and a very beautiful animated video on the uh, background. And this increases our revenue about from uh, fifteen to twenty percent if uh, if you talk about segments. So it's it's a lot for one screen. So yeah. It's really important on the screen tell exactly what should be people do in the product, and also it's uh, uh, onboarding. For example, on onboarding, you also should sell the product with the marketing. So if you have some new product, and uh, uh, for example, client go to the, your, your app 
and see the eye, yes, and have this question, for example, what's um, somebody's ethnicity, uh, what's your friend's ethnicity, he not yet understand uh, who you're talking about, what you're selling, what is this product, what's inside. So it's a very good idea to uh, ask some questions. Uh, for example, is it okay to ask how your day and clients needed and said, okay, in this app, somebody should, will ask me about how I, I'm doing every day. So is the, this is also the part of this process and it can increase your metric like from uh, 10 to 15% also, what is very good for uh, several screens and very cheap. And also about marketing and products. So network effect is very good. And if you don't have it, it's not uh, amazing perspective nowadays because uh, uh, yeah, what is network effects is when uh, every lead you have uh, make a new lead cheaper than a previous. And every uh, client you have make your product better than uh, it was before your uh, client. So for example, Zoom have this marketing effect in the COVID. Yeah, everybody just share. Okay, easy. And uh, a lot of products like Flow, for example, have also this network effect because in Flow, when you uh, just uh, say the dates of your cycle, machine learning uh, makes some predictions and for new clients, the algorithm is much better. So uh, it's very good thing. And now in Journey I, we're working on it, but I can tell you <laughs> about the features yet, uh, but I think you see it uh, in a very short time. So, uh, and also here is the bonus. Uh, yeah, I, I told about all the things, but you know, uh, now there is uh, really important uh, changes in the world is GPT-4, 5, Midjourney, generative networks. And uh, yeah, some people told us, okay, it's just, uh, we already saw uh, classification networks, we already saw image generations, it was some kind of hysteria previously. So what's the difference in the same? I think it's not the same and uh, we will all see a lot of differences and we already see them and we will talk about this in context of product and marketing. So what these networks can do already, they can generate the pictures uh, for example, a lot of pictures in this presentation was generated by Midjourney, <laughs> and uh, like a lot of text was copyrighted and ge generated with Midjourney. Uh, because I use it like every day, and I can't live without this tool. And uh, yeah, and also what is uh, very important: this uh, tool can write code, so uh, write some program code, and helps the developers to uh, write their features, develop their features faster. Yeah, and uh, the speed of product development increases. I think it will increase. And now you can create a not, not good startup MVP. Honestly, it's will not about some great features. It will not about some uh, interesting ideas, but you can create a bad uh, startup MVP in just two days. Write the code, set up the targeting, create the creative. And all the things will be in bad level, of course. Yes, but it, it's possible. For example, uh, after the chat GPT uh, was in production, uh, yeah, some uh, uh, guy on uh, uh, LinkedIn made this experiment, so he said to GPT-4, uh, uh, make me a health app, so GPT uh, just say what, what you should do, then uh, he said create a visual description of this app and uh, add this description to the journey to the lead two, yes, and then generate the, the screens, and they are not unique, they are not good, but uh, the fact, yes, that's, uh, I think uh, with the help of chat GPT, all developers will be uh, do their work much better, much faster, and uh, yeah, it's important. Why this is important? Because if your uh, speed of uh, product development is increases, yeah, and user uh, attention <laughs> that we have are not increased so so much. For example, if there is a statistic that's uh, 46 of Americans believe they spend on average from four to five hours on their smartphones uh, each day. This means that we don't have so much uh, free attention. The attention is limited. Uh, and a lot of uh, Americans, uh, as I remember, 15% spend more than seven hours a day in the phone. And uh, okay, we can increase the total attention level three times if people will be relieved from the phone, but it's three times, it's not how the speed increase. So what does it mean? That, uh, and, uh, yes, and uh, very interesting calculation I made. So how much is minute of your time worth? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I don't have a time but uh, to explain this, but it's very interesting that uh, as maybe uh, the, co uh, the money that uh, Facebook got from your attention is bigger than average global salary. It is a very interesting statistic, but, but 
uh, what does it mean? It, mean, uh, it means the amount of people free intention is decreasing, and this means that we should think about more creative, more uh, original ways of attracting the customers. Uh, yeah, and this is the new competitor thing. Okay, uh, so to conclude, yes, make the conclusion uh, about uh, all these things. So, so think about your target audience together, product manager and uh, marketing specialist. And you should work really together because if some marketing specialist or product manager says it's not my zone of responsibility, it's a retention, you should think about it. You shouldn't work with a specialist because uh, it's really the same now. There is no border between. And uh, make sure that you're saying the same thing in your advertising and product and tell users in a great, day, great detail why they need your product and all the things is very simple screens very simple uh titles make a uh, great uh, can make a great uh product uh metrics uh growth yeah also it's be it's always good to ensure a network effect and creative ways of attracting attention are important and become more and more important every day with the de with development of chat gpt uh so thank you so much for your attention <laughs> because we have a limited attention and uh, you're here and i appreciate it a lot uh and we all so thank you so much sdg for organizing this wonderful meetup and here is my contact my telegram channel and my telegram and you can text me with a question or just uh speak with me thank you so much Thank you, Tatiana. I personally love AI and I think it's here to stay. Uh, it's the matter of how are we gonna live with it? We have a question for you. Are you personally afraid of chat GPT? Uh, well, um, you know about afraid? Uh, um, it's an interesting question. So I think I'm not afraid of chat GPT because I, <laughs> I love AI and I, you know, I loved it eight years ago and I see how it grows. And I think we um, are witnesses of something great. And now we have like unlimited possibilities and a great, uh, you know, ways to express ourselves. So AI is great. And also, yeah, there is some th thoughts about general AI. It's like not, not now, but it's not, uh, it's like decades from now, I think from 30 to 100 years. And it's interesting, it's a little bit scary general AI, but it's very wonderful, I think. I can talk about I, this for you for hours, <laughs> but now I will not. I agree but with you. Can you. Read Telegram channel, my thoughts. <laughs> wonderful. Um, everyone, if you have any questions, you can send them in. Uh, and uh, yeah, we missed a question from the last uh, uh, last uh, part. Uh, we'll be able to ask that question after our third speaker, um, which will be Yaroslav Sergeyev, uh, head of the MarTech at SDG. Yaroslav will be speaking about the things product and marketing managers don't tell each other. So uh, Yaroslav, if you're ready. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Let me share my presentation. I hope it will be fast. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, that's it. Let's go. Uh, first of all, uh, as usual, as everybody, uh, I'll uh, talk a few words about who am I. I have been developing and managing, managing dating service for the last 15 years. All this time I was very driven uh, by the opportunity to do everything at once, technology, product, uh, marketing, all this mix. Uh, therefore, uh, it was very interesting to me to create a certain division in the, such a big uh, holding like as the G uh, that can deal with all this together. Uh, this division is called MarTech. Uh, it's a team that develops technological solutions for the marketing purposes. Uh, so uh, that's all about me. Let's talk about my presentation. Uh, often in digital companies, product and marketing teams uh, do not uh, know each other. They feeling the areas of responsibility do not cross. It's almost the same that uh, Tanya already talked about. And in my uh, speech, I want to analyze the typical aspects of how product and marketing managers can interact uh, with each other to, to make something better. Let's go. 
so uh, this is how uh, typical digital or not even digital business looks like in the most simplified form. Um, at the entrance, we have marketing spends. Uh, our marketing team spend money to acquire users. The product monetizes. If there is more money at the exit uh, than we lost at the entrance, so our unit economics works good and let's drink champagne. Now the same thing, uh, a little bit more detail. Uh, the first touch point for users in the product will be attribution layer, which we will talk about a little bit later. It's an important thing. At the same time, there is a few organic uh, channels nearby. This is, of course, not free, but not attributable traffic. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it because it's quite different uh, in terms of interacting with the product and, for example, brand manager. And the most important uh, thing uh, in uh, our dipping step, that the output of the project is not just the money, uh, but it's paying users multiplied by their LTV. So, of course, it's money. Okay, but it's money uh, not just now, uh, they are stretched over the time. Sometimes it can be weeks, sometimes it can be even years. And this money is usually spent not only the champagne, uh, I hope it's so, but also uh, for acquisition more users. So if you have more pairs or big LTV at the exit, you can uh, buy more users uh, at the entrance. Uh, so it's, it's the main link be between the product and uh, the marketing. Uh, now a little bit more about the product. It's not just a rectangle, but it's a funnel. It's uh, users at the, each step of interaction with your product refuse to use it. Uh, I hope not all of them, uh, but some part on every step. Someone didn't like the registration page. Someone didn't want to confirm email and so on. On every step, uh, user, you will lose users more and more. The deeper we look in the product, the smaller part of the users uh, will reach uh, this certain stage and finally will be able just to pay you because usually payment is some final step of all the conversions. Uh, that's all uh, about introductory part. I apologize for those uh, for whom it was obviously. Now actually the topic of my report, let's, uh, let's, talk, let's talk about uh, relations between product manager and uh, marketing manager. Um, the first and most obviously thing uh, uh, how product manager can help uh, marketer uh, is just to provide a wider uh, conversion funnel. Uh, let's take a look at the digits. For example, we have uh, $10,000 of marketing spend, and all this traffic uh, going through the, our product funnel, uh, giving us uh, 500 paying users with the LTV of $20. Uh, okay, now uh, product manager did something, some kind of magic. For example, he uh, made the better onboarding page and the most part of users started to register profiles. Or somehow he made some A-B test of the color of the buttons and made the, use the better, better converting uh, color of the buttons that users like to, to put, and their conversions funnels become wider. Uh, our LTV stayed the same. We, uh, our service stayed the same. We just have uh, more users at the, uh, at the bottom of the conversions panel. Now it's the, almost uh, the same LTV of $20, but on the same traffic, we are having already 700 paying users. As, uh, as I've previously told, we have a link between how many money we have on the exit, uh, we can spend more money at the entrance. So. Uh, just making conversions funnel wider in some point or few points, uh, we can spend uh, marketing uh, spans much, much bigger. 
so uh, it's it's in my opportunity is the main link uh, the money at the entrance money spends uh, or money at the exit spends at the entrance uh, it's the main intersection uh, now about attribution um, Everyone who has involved in mobile marketing uh, over the past few years, uh, I'm sure we all share the tea right now. But uh, let's imagine that we are in beautiful past like uh, 2015 and talk about uh, some ideal attribution. Uh, a product manager must understand that attribution uh, is the most important work tool for marketing manager. Attribution is technology of matching the users with the channel that bought him. Uh, the more accurate the attribution, the better companies, uh, marketing companies can be optimized. Make sure that uh, uh, if you're a pro product manager, you should make sure that user attribution is available in every important conversion within your product. Of course, payment is the most important conversion and every Paying user should be understandable what marketing channel bought him, because if you understand it, you can say, "Hey guys, uh, this user, this channel, it's okay. We want more such users." And if you don't know wh what the source of this user, how he comes inside your project, you can't scale the number of such users. Um, yeah, and now era of privacy is making um, uh, the solutions of attributions uh, more and more difficult. And there is big pain and there's uh, entire separate conferences just about attribution issues because it's really a huge question with a lot of solutions and a lot of pains. Um, so, Let's, let's, now let's talk about reverse synergy. How can marketing manager help a product manager? The first thing that comes in mind is the core audience boost. What's this? Uh, uh, if you are, for example, making uh, some gaming service, some bubbles, you don't need to think about some uh, core audience because it doesn't matter. Uh, do you have one uh, user inside the EU app or 10 users? Uh, their user experience will be almost the same. But uh, the, uh, for social services, for example, messengers, social networks of any kind, as well as dating services that we are developing, it's very important to have the core audience. Uh, it's, such services just can't work with two or 10 people. You need at least a few thousands of them. Uh, so I'm not going to read the points on my slide. Uh, I'm sure you've already done it. This is a short list of questions that marketers should ask uh, at the start of the social project launch. And the most painful point here is uh, that such acquisition uh, doesn't aim to make money. Uh, really, you just spend and, no, and have no profit. Uh, and uh, the goal here is much simply to provide the minimum share of the some simple conversions, such as completed registration or uploading a photo to profile. Just forget about the bottom of the conversion funnel about payments and focus on some, some top conversion that are important for your social service. Usually it's just completed and verified registration. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about another classic crossover between product and marketing. It's uh, the share of acquisition and uh, retention. Um, this issue requires uh, coordination. Uh, we, we are talking about um, uh, how to grow or how to manage uh, or how to deal with the uh, uh, retention of the users. This issue uses coordination and actions of both sides, projects and marketing. So uh, let's talk about each side. Uh, the product can return users through the traditional channels of email, push notifications, less often through the SMS and messengers. Uh, 
And uh, from the other side, marketing can launch remarketing campaigns that show targeted creatives to exact users of your project. A uh, classic example of remarketing, uh, for example, you have collected an order basket in marketplace, but uh, not paid for it. For example, you forgot it, you have your child's are crying and you decided to, okay, I'll forget it. Uh, after a few times, you will see somewhere an advertisement in the style that, hey, Sarah, your eBay basket is still waiting for you. Come back and get 5% discount on your payment. It's classical remarketing. Uh, so uh, there's a few points about each solution. In the product uh, retention channels, they are quite difficult to manage. Every day, I spend a lot of time managing our emails delivery channels. It's very big and complicated infrastructure, dealing with reputation, dealing with the segmentation of users and so on. It's really complicated, uh, but uh, it's almost cheap. Sending just one letter, it's very cheap. It's some small part of one cent, for example. And for one cent, you can send 100 emails. But uh, uh, everybody understands that it's cheap. Everybody sending a lot of emails and push notifications. Just check your uh, mobile phone. How many unread push notifications do you have right now? Yeah, a lot of them. So retention channels are usually, of course, cheap, but have low conversions because they are annoying users. From the other side, remarketing campaigns, they are expensive. Yeah, much more expensive than email or push sending. But they are easy to manage because there are a lot of tools for remarketing campaigns in any advertisement network. And uh, they have a lot of visualization options. Your uh, advertisement creatives can look like anything. It can be video, it can be some kind of pop-up, it can be personalized. You can offer discounts or anything else and you will uh, reach your users and not inside the, your project. You can reach your users on the newsletter, news sites, on the emailing services everywhere in the internet, in uh, Facebook, for example, and so on. Um, how to choose the right proportion between the product and marketing uh, uh, retention? It's a topic for big, uh, long presentation. But one way or another, the correct solution of uh, this problem is to join work of managing and product marketing managers uh, to, to find it. We need to, to work together. I'll repeat it one, one and more and more. Okay. So another idea. Uh, let's talk about uh, the price of, uh, of our uh, users in acquisition. Uh, it's, uh, if you think not just about the budget, like one big thing, and you understand that your budget is divided into a few channels that, uh, acquire users for the different, uh, prices and they provide, uh, different conversions about the, inside the projects, depending on their price, you are expecting that, uh, more, uh, expensive users will provide better conversions. And I'm sure that, uh, for example, where, uh, now we have two marketing channels. One of them provide one dollar leads uh, the, uh, at the uh, entrance, and at the exit we have, for example, three dollars LTV, and uh, the another one we have five dollars leads and seven dollars LTV. So it's our reality. Uh, we have excellent attribution. At any payment, we know exactly what channel. Uh, bought uh, this user. And now all our two channels, they are almost bought. We can't uh, grow them anymore because we bought all the users that are inside. And we want to expand our marketing and we're trying to understand, okay, we see uh, uh, another channel that can provide uh, new leads for, for example, $10. Uh, we don't know how the conversion funnel in the project will look like. We don't know what will be LTV of such users. They are a uh, few times more expensive than all users we uh, bought previously. So 
can we buy this ten dollars leads or not? It's a typical question for any uh, marketing managers, and uh, product manager can help them to find the proper answer. So we need to somehow to understand um, fastly: uh, can we buy these ten dollars leads or not? So there's a few rules uh, of prediction of the LTV or revenue or some type of conversions inside the project based on the channels that we already have. The simple predictions, it's some kind of static rules uh, based on your, your current traffic. For example, 90% uh, 90, uh, 90 of paying users made first payment during the first session. So you are trying to buy a few ten dollars leads and see uh, uh, so how the first session looks like, uh, how many of them are going to pay during the first session. The another hypothesis is that uh, LTV collected not uh, just all the time. There are some uh, milestones in collecting of LTV. It's especially for your project, of course. But for example, 30% uh, of LTV done during the first month. So you need to buy a few uh, of the expensive leads and take a look at the first session and first month of uh, existing inside the project. And you will understand, do they do better conversions than the cheap leads or do they do worse conversions? Uh, it, there can be a lot of such rules uh, that can help to make some simple predictions of profitability of buying users of different price. And uh, in finding these rules, especially for your project, uh, project manager will help you to do all this. Um, there, it's really simple rules. It's very easy to find them by project manager or your product analytics uh, on somebody else inside the product. Uh, the more complicated way that we are using in SDG, it's uh, prediction LTV uh, neural network. Uh, previously, Andre already talk, talked about it. Um, uh, inside the virtual gifts team, they are using such predictions to uh, clusterize uh, customers. And in marketing, we are using uh, the same uh, neural network to understand uh, profitability of the different new marketing channels. Uh, using this neural network during the day or two of buying new channel, we can understand uh, will it be profitable after the year, for example, or not. It's uh, very helpful. And uh, the last idea about uh, about predicting LTV. It's the, okay, if you use some algorithm, if you use some um, AA predictions and you have some users that have zero predicted LTV, it's not a doom. It's, it's, it's not mean that you just lose money for equalizing them. It's just a reason to switch these users from the product monetization to advertising monetization. So if any point you understand that this user is not going to pay for you, just show him advertisement. More and more, depending on his uh, life cycle, but anyway, uh, this advertisement will cover the costs of his acquisition and maybe make some profit. Uh, very, uh, very often, uh, marketing managers and product managers forget about this opportunity, but it's quite cool. And the last thing before the final words, uh, it's everyone's favorite A-B tests. The canon uh, says that the same users uh, should participate in sampling, uh, into dividing into control and experimental group. Uh, and uh, different managers approach issues of this sameness on their own way. The classic way of sampling, let's divide user ID for some digit for two or three and use the rest of dividing uh, as a sampling uh, attribute. But uh, the better way of sampling is to divide not the existing users, but to divide the marketing channel. Uh, 
because uh, there's a lot of marketing channels that can be uh, that providing the same users uh, and it can be divided in attribution or somehow else um, to provide uh, the clearly same traffic, clear exactly the same users um, uh, to the different flows inside the project. For example, if we are making A-B tests about uh, uh, buttons color, we can uh, divide uh, this experimental and uh, control group right in the marketing channel and have the clear A-B test starting from registration till the final conversion. It's, for my opinion, it's the best, uh, the best way to provide A-B tests. It's almost the same uh, uh, final words. Uh, the division uh, dividing marketing and product uh, inside any, any company is very conditional. Uh, the more these functions are mixed in company, uh, the more synergy can be provided. But of course, in large companies, uh, mixing is administratively impossible because in marketing and in product, they can be involved few thousand of people. And if you will try to mix them, it will be kind of chaos. But in this case, uh, can be created some separate division, uh, for example, called MarTech, like I am doing, uh, that will cover the uh, junction of the product and marketing. And the better the product and marketing are able to understand the needs and capabilities of each other, the more uh, they think about interaction, the more effective the work of both themselves and the entire company uh, will be. Uh, that's all for me. Uh, thank you for listening, and I hope that my speech was somehow helpful for you. I'm ready for questions. Uh, let's go. Thank you, Yaroslav. That was insightful, to say the least. Um, while we're waiting for questions on uh, your presentation, let's take a moment to ask a couple that uh, we had left there for Andre. Andre, are you ready? Um, there was uh, a question. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm yeah. here. There was a question about uh, data collection. How do we collect data on psychological properties of the users? Okay, so right now we don't. Right now we only uh, worked out the behavioral patterns, uh, but um, I can talk about what we plan to do, and uh, I believe that uh, there will be the simplest step uh, possible. Um, we'll ask. So we can do it in several ways, like, I don't know, we can put a pop-up on a website, like, how do you feel today? And starting from, I don't know, depressed and uh, get a slider to up to, I don't know, I'm sex and I know it, for example. Yeah, and uh, we expect that user will provide this information uh, to to us by themselves. And uh, like another uh, thing that we can try, I don't know, we can um, insert into a customer's feed on the, for example, social network. We can insert something like, uh, like tests, uh, like uh, determine who are you from friends or I don't know, something like this, where we can ask them like uh, several simple questions uh, to find out, like, I don't know, uh, do you tend to gain energy from drinking tea all by yourself, uh, just to determine if he's in introvert or extrovert or something like this. So I believe that the simplest solution is asking them like, and uh, you can be very creative in, in developing a lot of ways of, of, um, of asking uh, your clients something. Uh, as for more difficult steps, uh, like we can try to analyze uh, chats using like uh, big data analysis, something like this, uh, and uh, try to develop some some parameters that can be valuable. Like I don't know the number of words in a message, or uh, like uh, tendency to uh, uh, to use exclamation points, for example, or something like this. So there can be tons of uh, different uh, ways, and you have to test and uh, like, and then determine whether or not it's working in in your specific in your specific case. I believe uh, this will be my answer. Great. Yeah. If a user is caps locking. Um, oh yes, definitely. Yes, that's gonna be another great. question for you, Andre. Um, after segmentation, how did you design the feature? Was it some kind of a recommendation system? 
yeah, so technically it is a personalized algorithm that uh, just weights some different parameters and uh, gives you like the personal gift setup sorry just for you well based on your behavioral attributes and uh, geographical and uh, uh, demographical uh, information that uh, that you have thank you andre um yeah. we have one question for tatiana now uh tanya can you join us back uh, yeah i'm here so the question is why dau um is a project metric if marketing would acquire a thousand users per day and DAU would be a thousand, it would be a marketing achievement, not a product. Uh, stickiness or churn looks more useful. Mm -hmm. Uh, so here is the questions, uh, question and the statement. And uh, yeah, thank you for the question. It's illustrate very good the um, sense of my presentation. I'm not uh, agree with the statement that DAU is not product metric. And that's uh, yeah. First of all, uh, retention and sticky factor and churn is very also important. And uh, yeah, it, I was told about it. But I think this metric should be together because we can make very niche products. I don't know for your family. You can make the app for your family. <laughs> when will be all your grandmothers and relatives uh, it will be like 15 users and with very high retention but it's 15 users or you can make uh, for example in our case some uh, kinky aesthetics so that's close to uh, 5,000 people yes and retention will be great but dare you not so uh, th this is always uh, two metrics they should be together with product manager so how big is your uh, target audience yes and uh, what's the value that you bring to them without each of the this uh, question without each of this metric, uh, so your job is not um, valuable, I think, enough. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the first and uh, second uh, thought about the year and about marketing. If you have some uh, limited budget. <laughs> you can with can't with marketing without retention without a good LTV acquire 1,000 uh, users each day. So uh, you will run out of your budget. But I'm uh, totally agree, uh, and uh, this is the <laughs> sense of uh, the presentation. That's uh, it should be all these metrics and retention and do you uh, marketing specialists should think about it too and with with uh, product managers, yeah, because they're responsible for the audience that they acquire and the price and the uh, uh, different channels yeah so basically it's uh, important metrics for both of them but the EU is absolutely a product metric too great one won't work without the other as they say uh thank you i think that's all the questions we have uh anybody in chat want to ask something right now feel free i want to thank all of our speakers today for their wonderful presentations um, I'm sure it was insightful for our viewers, um, for me personally, too. Um, anybody who is interested, you can visit our website, sdggroup.ai, and sign up to our YouTube channel. Uh, you're on it right now. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, you know the drill. Uh, still no questions. So, yeah. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope you have a great day, and see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.